Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and it is not your imagination that you are hearing crickets in the background while I do this video. And that is because I decided that today, because we just don't seem to hear anything out of Ripple about on-demand liquidity or XRP in this great liquidity crisis that the world is in right now, and it just doesn't make any sense to me. I decided that I would have crickets going in the background in this video. I'm going to turn the crickets down just a little bit so that it's not too, too annoying. But I think it will really make the point of this video. Let's start out. This was a question that I saw from last night. Um, Coining203 says, on a serious note, when was the last time we got some big news from Ripple? Well, it's not so much the big news that I'm focused on here. I'm more focused on why are we, you know, all we heard, and I mentioned it in the video in the last two, a couple of days, all we've heard for the last couple, two or three years is the liquidity solution, the, the Ripple's core products called on-demand liquidity. And here we are in the middle of a great, probably the greatest of liquidity crises. And Ripple is nowhere to be found. We don't hear anything. There's no Brad Garlinghouse interview. Nowhere, nothing. It's the perfect time to get out there and tell everyone about your product and what it does. But Ripple's nowhere to be found. And I find that interesting. And for that reason, you're listening to Crickets. And I want to show you a few tweets here. The, fir the first one was a reply Mr. B gave to Coining203, which was, the Brad signal is in the sky and we're awaiting his arrival. The world needs liquidity, fast and inexpensive payments. I thought this was a great tweet. So I just, he inspired me to do a couple of my own tweets. The first one is this from this morning. Seems like the discussion of on-demand liquidity and an efficient digital asset that can solve global liquidity problems in a financial crisis is in quarantine too. Where are the Zoom and the Zoom CNBC and CNN International, which is where Julia Chatterley is, interviews about the solution. Crickets. And then I'm, I tweeted this video. This is Chris Larson, who said this on stage at Money 2020 in 2018. We believe will be, it is 10 years out on the financial crisis. We still don't have the infrastructure, perhaps, to prevent the next one. And I think this is where digital assets can really help, because an efficient digital asset uh, can really solve um, some of the key problems in global liquidity. You know, the world's got trillions and trillions of dollars tied up in liquidity just to get around to how clunky the movement of value is around the world. If with a really efficient digital asset, something like XR XRP, again, that's what we believe will be the, the, the most efficient, um, you can now reduce trillions and trillions of capital from being tied up. So you can make those transfers instantly as a bank or as a payment provider or as an enterprise without having to have money pre-positioned all over the world. So that's... Okay, so there's the first clip. That's the first thing I wanted to show you. And then there was this tweet that I sent out to Julia Chatterley, who has interviewed Brad Garlinghouse twice and the MoneyGram CEO once. I said, hey, Julia Chatterley, Ripple's on-demand liquidity and digital asset XRP could help solve the world's current liquidity problem. It would be awesome if you did a Zoom interview with Chris Larson, Brad Garlinghouse, or Joel Katz, David Schwartz. They can download Zoom here. <laughs> I was just being kind of funny there. Um, but they can download Zoom. I'm pretty sure they all have Zoom. <laughs> but I just, I just, I only wanted to make this funny point because, and, and add the crickets to this video because I just think that it, it, it makes no sense. It, if I, if my product is called on demand liquidity and I have said out loud many times that it's a liquidity solution that would solve problems like this and free up Nostro, Nostro money around the world. Why is there no, why aren't they coming out and discussing it right now? Now's the perfect time to shout from the rooftops what your solution is. Where are they? So the crickets will play on. Um, all right. Now, and here's the other thing that I'm, I'm worried about. 
I'm actually being very sarcastic here, but I, want, I thought this was funny enough to, to make a funny point here. I'm worried that we could have some other competitors who would like to change the world who could come in while Ripple is not speaking. You remember when Dilip Rao said, um, idle speculation, cool your jets? This is a quote from Dilip Rao back when somebody had asked some kind of question on a video. I looked for the video and couldn't find it. He said, cool your jets in response to something. Well, there are, there are very competitive other digital assets out there who, whose creators are, are taking that page out of the Ripple playbook and they're telling their followers to cool your jets. The guy who created Doggy Coin, creator to Crypto Faithful, cool your jets. He said in this, well, first up here at the top, he says, um, this is, um, forget finance, this technology, technology can truly change the world. If Ripple doesn't get out there and really get talking, we have to worry about competitors like Doggy Coin coming, uh, coming out and, and, um, being competitive in this space. <laughs> I'm just being, I'm just joking around here. It's, it's, he says, it's not meant to be disparaging. He said, I just think that it makes no sense for people to have this devotion to it. It's just a technology. Cool your jets was his advice to crypto faithful. He's talking, he's probably talking about the prices of dog, doggy coin or whatever you call it. But anyway, I'm just joking here, of course, but I, I just thought it was a funny point to make. Um, okay. Next, uh, this is from X Lighting the Way. Anchorage, which has been backed by Visa and Andreessen and Horowitz, today announced it has added support to Ripple's XRP. The company said it will help in an ecosystem of institutions that hold XRP, protect, and use their funds with its institutional custody service. That's big time. Progress. All right. Um, and then we've got this from XRP Crypto Wolf. The Financial Action Task Force, FATF, praised U.S. regulators' efforts in the crypto asset space. The FATF has rated the U.S. largely compliant with its revised criteria for preventing money laundering and terrorist financing through digital assets. All right, and now we've got, now you'll have to forgive me, but outside right now, what we're dealing with is the one of the utility companies has decided to right outside of my window. So if you hear a tractor, that's what you're listening to, as well as the crickets. So it's kind of like listening to a tractor at night. Um, so ticket attorney at Fix Tickets Vegas sent me this. Now this is a big deal right here. Bank of France says Ethereum and Ripple XRP could power central bank digital currencies. Let's listen to a couple of quotes. Uh, it says that they uh, they put out a document on Monday uh, that invited interested parties to participate in the program. Applications due on May 5th. The challenge of these experience, experiments is not to replace these two existing forms of central money, but to identify how innovative technologies could improve the efficiency and fluidity of payment systems and financial infrastructures, allowing a better financial sector to ensure the smooth financing of the economy. This solution could be employed. Uh, well, it says the central banks is also analyzing how cryptocurrencies can be used to power CBDCs. In a recent internal report, the bank highlights, highlights Ethereum and Ripple as two crypto assets that could be used to issue tokenized central bank digital currencies. Folks, what do you think about that? This solution should be employed to carry out end-to-end -end transactions including financial settlement using assets that are tokenized on a blockchain. All right. I think that, that well, here it is. Here it is right here. Since the attribute, attributes of a unit of wholesale CBDC file representing, uh, representing the current unit keys enabling use may be integrated in a crypto asset circulating on another blockchain, which is possible on Ethereum and Ripple. For example, it would then become possible to use the unit on this blockchain. My question to you all is, do you think that France was handed the central banker digital currency handbook from the center for, of the Indust fourth industrial revolution that they got at the, the uh, World Economic Forum? I'll bet you France got themselves a copy of that. All right. Now, um, this is from Brian Melancholy XRP. 
sent me this. And I'm going to go into this a little bit. This is interesting. Um, this is from XRP Chiz. The global financial reset has been planned for years. Ripple and XRP are the solutions to the problem. 2020 is the year. Faster, more ubiquitous payments by 2020 Fed. This guy is the guy that started the World Economic Forum. His not, name is Klaus Schwab, I believe is how you say his name. Listen to what he says. What we want to do in Davos this year in this respect is to push the reset button. Let me explain. The world is much too much still caught in a crisis management mode. And we forget that we should take now into our hands uh, and we should look for solutions for the really fundamental issues. We should look at our future in a much more constructive, in a much more strategic way. And that's what Davos is about. What we in want other to words, do in Davos in other words, stop living in a world where the central banks just react to problems that they mostly created and create some solutions, i.e. digital assets and XRP, the greatest digital asset ever created. All right. So let's look at this Klaus Schwab. I, I have not really pointed him out to you to really say, let's look at him. He's the guy that created the World Economic Forum. OK, he's a German engineer and economist, best known as the founder and executive chairman of the World Economic Forum. And I hope you're enjoying the crickets, by the way. I think it's a pretty nice touch. Um, his wife and former secretary, um, Hilda, co-founded the Schwab Foundation for Social Entrepreneur. Anyway, he's from Germany. Let's, I, he started the World Economic Forum, and he's he's basically a, a, a basically if you really want to me to sum it up for you, he's a guy that that all he's ever done is gone to school, and now he's a quote intellectual who is supposed to decide where the globe is going to go. If you really want me to sum it up, that's what he is. He is this guy is a globalist. I mean, that's what he is. Um, He's the definition of a globalist. He even has the Harvard degree to uh, back it up. Um, he's got all, he, he's been to all these major schools. Um, let's see, it says he got a master of public administration from the Harvard Business School. But anyway, here's the things I wanted to zero you in on. Um, the first was, let me see, there's one thing that's important here is that these are the groups he was in, but he was also a member of the steering committee for the Bilderberg Group. Never hurts to mention that. But this is what I wanted to zero in on. He is listed as the author of several books, including The Fourth Industrial Revolution, which he wrote in 2016, and Shaping the Fourth Industrial Revolution in 2018, both, both of which were ghostwritten by World Economic Forum employee Nicholas Davis. So the World Economic Forum created this whole concept of the fourth industrial revolution and all of these world powers are right there behind it and i want to i want to show you uh first let's look at this okay this is the fourth i'm going to refresh this page so i can play this video for you the fourth industrial revolution by klaus schwab this is the guy the same guy and it's uh, the world economic forum helped him write this book um, and it, he, this was put out in 2016, remember? Yeah, the one thing that it said in there is that the business models of every industry will change. Are there any business models that are changing right now? Just, I just wanted to throw that out there because later, I think in this video, Ashish Birla did a tweet in, uh, that I'll show you in a second where he made reference to this in this current environment. All right, so, so, he, so anyway, Klaus Schwab writes this book with the help of the World Economic Forum about the fourth industrial revolution and the same month that he releases this video, look at the, the uh, article that Ripple puts out. Um, January 4th, 2016, in the same month that he releases this book, welcome to the fourth industrial revolution. And they go through a lot of different charts and graphs and, and the whole, how excited that Ripple is about the fourth industrial revolution. Down here at the bottom, I wanted to read you this part. Um, as we've noted in the past, multinational corporations already make up over 90% of payment volume in the world. It's understandable that these companies enter Industry 4.0. They'll want smart inventory, not only 
uh, of their goods and services, but also their capital. After all, the two primary benefits included by the Industry 4.0 Working Group's 2013 paper are flexibility and resource productivity and efficiency. Eventually, the expectation will be that payments are able to play the same roles. What we're seeing is the convergence of the Internet of Data Physical things and value, my colleague Ryan Zagone explained to me. Ryan is head of regulatory relations, former head of research at Ripple, and is an elected member of the Federal Reserve's Faster Payments Task Force Steering Committee. I see the Internet of Value as the underlying incentive structure for the Internet of Things. Ryan continued, but to get there, we need to be able to make payments in real time, to be able to make both do large dollar and micro payments economically. Looking to the future, I expect payments to not only become more integrated into our lives, but also passive as they become automated, interoperable, and seamless. I like it. Um, and then let's go on to the next thing. Michelle Vandenberg sent me this. Um, here's, here's a Sheesh Burless tweet. Amazon spent 20 years building a robust e-commerce dis distribution network. With the current situation, I've seen so many local grocery stops, shops, restaurants, bookstores, etc. pivot their business model into e-commerce and act as many local distribution centers. Does this trend continue post the current events? You have to wonder. He, Ashish Burl is not talking about on-demand liquidity and XRP during this. He's talking about some type of a change in industry. That's interesting to me. All right. Um, next, Chinu Patel sent me this. Um, Swift passes an announcement. This is from XRP Phoenix. Swift passes an announcement right under our noses to allow third parties to move payments instantly through Swift. And this, I don't know what this is from Finextra. This ambitious platform expansion means Swift will support financial institutions to strengthen their positions in B2B payments and capture new volume in SME and consumer segments. So, um, I've all you know, ever since I studied BNY Mellon, they made it very clear that they want to take Swift and the Swift GPI and connect it with the new technologies that they made that very clear in one of their side the silos videos that i showed you from back in i think 2016 and so that's kind of what i think this is all about all right let's see what we got here D david the priest sent me this this right here looks like a nightmare waiting to happen i'm not going to get real far into it but i am going to show you this and tell you this is true some people are about to go to jail uh, we talked before about how some of the people in Congress had sat in on a January briefing in Congress, and then they turned around and went and sold a lot of their stocks ahead of the current events. And Kelly Loeffler, who, who started Backed, and whose husband is the CEO, I think, of ICE, the Internet Intercontinental Exchange, she got appointed to Congress in Georgia, in my state. And apparently she's one of the ones who sold their stock, but it's even worse. That if this is true, she might be in big trouble. New disclosure reveals that she and her husband dumped retail stock and then bought shares in a company that manufactures medical supplies. This could be trouble. I just wanted to show you all that. All right. Let me see if I need to delete any things here. Okay, here we go. Now, I, I yesterday I went through, and I'm sorry, by the way, yesterday I did not realize my computer's memory had slowed down, and I did not realize that some of the, thing, the videos I was showing you were, were like, pausing and having problems because on my end it didn't do that and so I, but it was an hour long video and so i had you know I, I had put i probably spent three to four hours making that video putting that video together and so i just didn't have it in me to go and try to do that over again sorry um but i went and deleted a lot of my memory and i i hope that that now um let me turn these crickets down just a little bit. It's a great effect, and I do love my crickets, but they it can come down just, there we go. It makes you want to fall asleep, doesn't it? <laughs> well, anyway, I went over Accenture yesterday, but I did not go over standard. I, I have not, I realized I, I was looking at these, and I had not, I have not really gone into standard chartered, so I thought that I would do something similar with standard chartered and let you know what a big deal standard chartered is. They are an investor in Ripple. 
And they are the company, if you remember, I'll show it to you in a second, where Brad Garlinghouse said that Kahina Van Dyke, who left to go to Standard Chartered, will be a node on the network away. Um, okay, the first thing I wanted to show you is this. This is up from Bank XRP from back in 2018. Standard Chartered, the group today, releases its results for the sixth month ending the 30th of June 2018. Some info on Ripple and blockchain. And this is a PDF from Standard Chartered. It says the group has an equity investment in Series B preferred shares of Ripple Labs, which owns a, a digital currency XRP and is being carried at a fair value based on the shares initial offering price. The shares will continue to be valued at, at the initial offering price until such time as a reliable means of value. The cash flows and underlying assets is possible for additional sales are observable. And then down here it says fintech companies from small, they're investing in fintech companies from small startups to biggest platforms to transfer our ability to serve our clients digitally. Our recently announced partnership with Ant Financial, part of the Alibaba group, is, is one example of this. Together we have uh, created a blockchain based cross border wallet remittance service between Hong Kong and the Philippines, through which we leverage jointly developed technologies to deliver competitive and secure financial services across our unique, uniquely diverse network. So standard chartered is a big deal. Now, I wanted to show you, um, after we get past this, I'll show you. This is also from Bank XRP, Payment Steering Group. The, you remember the, um, the Payment Steering Group that Ripple put together? GPSG is comprised of banks including Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, Royal Bank of Canada, Santander, Standard Charter, Unicredit, and Westpac Banking Corporation. The GPSG will monitor the implementation and maintenance of Ripple payment capabilities. So this is their little um, payment steering group. And I just wanted to show you that, that uh, Standard Chartered was on that. Now, let's look at a little bit of history of Standard Chartered. This is uh, from their YouTube page. It's a pretty interesting one minute and 52 seconds. Watch this, just to understand. I want you to understand how big this bank, how this is a big bank. It begins with two Scotsmen who would never meet. Both businessmen, both politicians, both with a vision of where the world was going and how it could be. James Wilson helps to set up the Chartered Bank of India, Australia and China under a royal charter from Queen Victoria herself. It's 1853. Branches in Mumbai, Calcutta, Shanghai, Hong Kong, and Singapore follow. Elsewhere, John Patterson leads a consortium of Cape Colony businessmen to form the Standard Bank of British South Africa. It's 1862. Within a year, operations officially commence in Port Elizabeth. Later, they will expand across Africa. Two banks with a shared passion and exceptional talent for emerging and dynamic markets. Then came the wars. By the end of World War II, Chartered Bank has lost two-thirds of its branches, but it recovers and prospers again in the post-war world. By 1953, Standard Bank has offices across Southern, Central and Eastern Africa, expanding into Western Africa a decade later, while Chartered Bank goes from strength to strength in Hong Kong and Singapore. It's in 1969 when these two banks and their two histories merge to form one bank. Though Standard Bank in South Africa would later go its own way, the foundations are laid for a global bank with a unique footprint across diverse and dynamic markets. Okay, so I wanted to show you that. Um, now, just so you know, uh, if you're listening to this video, it, um, I just showed that video of Standard Chartered uh, Bank. It had music over the top of it. It's possible that 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 will I'll get hit with a copyright or something on that. And if I do, I'm going to take that video out. So so that's the reason I'm showing you the Wikipedia page. I just wanted to show you what this bank is. It's a British multinational bank and financial services company headquartered in London. It operates a network of more than 1,200 branches and outlets, including subsidiaries, associates, and joint ventures across more than 70 countries and employs around 87,000 people. 
It is a universal bank with operations in consumer, corporate, and institutional banking and treasury services. Despite its UK base, it does not conduct retail banking in the UK, and around 90% of its profits come from Asia, Africa, and Middle East. Um, okay, that's pretty much... I don't think there was anything else in here that I want. No, there was one section I wanted to show you, and that is down here. Supercharger FinTech Accelerator. Standard Charter's primary engagement with the FinTech community is focused in Hong Kong, working closely with and coordinated by the Accelerator, the Supercharger FinTech Accelerator, along with the main partner, Standard Chartered Bank, a founding member, and Fidelity International. Don't be surprised if you don't see Fidelity pop up in the conversation with Ripple and XRP folks has twice conducted programs enabling international growth stage companies to expand their operations with Asia. Standard Chartered Bank has initiated proof of concept projects with two companies, Bamboo and KYC Chain. All right, moving along. This is the Brad Garlinghouse tweet that I just wanted to remind you of. This is when Kahina Van Dyke, she says, Exc excited to announce joining an amazing team, Standard Chartered, to leverage digital technology, data, and delivering next-generation financial services at a global scale. And then Brad Garlinghouse tweeted this out. Congratulations, Kahina. We're glad you'll only be a node on the network away. So now we know, just as, a, as an aside, we know that the SEC of the United States is running a node because Stuart Alderati, Ripple's general counsel, who also used to work for Steve Mnuchin, the Treasury Secretary, he told us that the SEC is running a, a node on the network. Now we know that Standard Chartered is running a node on the network because Brad Garlinghouse said so. So who else will run nodes? I believe that that's pretty clear how this is going down. All right. So then I went and I decided I would look at Standard Chartered and some of their people. This is their board. I'm really not going to get into their board, but I did want to show you their the guy that's their chairman. He's got a pretty interesting background here. Um, group chairman. Let's see here. Central Bank of uh, spending 25 years at the Central Bank of Spain. He is on the international, let's see, chair of the International Relations Committee at the European Central Bank, member of the Economic and Financial Committee of the European Union, and chair of the working group on institutional investors at the Bank for International Settlements. He joined the International Monetary Fund in 2009, stepped down in two, September 2016 to join Standard Chartered. He was the financial counselor and director of the Monetary and Capital Markets Department and was responsible for the oversight and direction of the IMS monetary and financial sector work. He was the IMS chief spokesman on financial matters, including global financial stability. During his tenure at the IMF, Jose was a member of the plenary and steering committee of the Financial Stability Board, playing a key role in the reform of international financial regulation. How about that for a, for a guy who runs the, the, a company that is, that is invested in Ripple and obviously very heavily into this technology? They know it's about to change the world. All right, now I decided I would go back onto Twitter, see if I could find some vid videos where Standard Chartered, and I'm doing all this. Look, there's so many new people that are sitting at home trying to make, make sense out of all of this. And so I just think that it's important to go back and show you guys some things that maybe you, some of you haven't seen before. And some of you ha who have been here haven't seen some of these things. And some of these things I had not seen until I looked them up today. The first is this one from Stephen Bull from the DF. Um, and I will refresh that. Let's do that and go like this. Thing which might be a slight curveball, but I saw that Stan Chart made a substantial investment in a cryptocurrency called Ripple. Um, do you want to tell us about that? Because there's so much confusion about the crypto world and what's happening and how did you see that? Uh, and if you can contextualize that. Yeah, the, the company in question is called Ripple, mm. and uh, Standard Chartered Bank decided to invest in it. Uh, it's a company that is uh, looking at distributed ledger technology, uh, blockchain. And of course, blockchain has a number of uh, potential benefits for, for banks, especially when it comes to supply chain financing, trade financing, etc. And we felt that it was important to, you know, have a seat at the table, be able to you know, participate in some of these uh, emerging technologies. 
Uh, so, you know, hence our investment in Ripple. And I think it's really given us a, a huge uh, insight into, you know, what that opportunity is and how we can leverage on it. Increasingly, what we're seeing is partnerships between banks and fintechs. Uh, so, for instance, when we invested in Ripple, um, you know, in terms of the blockchain technology, that's one way of banks making sure that, you know, we are, uh, you know, we are, we are ahead of the curve in terms of, you know, partnering with the companies that are in those uh, spaces. Um, Standard Chartered has uh, an outfit in uh, in Silicon Valley. We call it SC Studios, yes. which is also you know. What a is way it? A VC or um, uh, it's, it's, it's yeah, it's 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 it's, a, it's an outfit that we have there where we can tap into some of the trends and some of the developments that are taking place uh, in Silicon Valley, which might have an impact on on us as a bank, so that you know we we are ahead of the curve in terms of those uh, strategic in inflection points. I love that phrase. I'm all right, there's one video I wanted to show you. I'm gonna get rid of a couple of these things. Oop. My sound effect just went out. Here we go. All right, I'm just trying to get rid of some of these things. All right, and then here's another one from Jack the Rippler. Um, from, this is from back in 2016 at Cybos. Let's see here, right here. I don't think so there is a problem we are trying to solve. Look. Anything is a problem till you figure out a better way of doing stuff, right? So uh, we, are, we are looking at new value propositions rather than a specific problem which we need to solve. Uh, well, we live in a days of instant gratification. You won't wait five seconds for a web page to load. Why would you wait three days for a payment to settle? So let's go real time. The world is moving real time. So should payments and other forms of settlements. Well, we have had two, two use cases with Ripple. The first one was on trade finance, where we tried to solve the problem of duplicate invoice financing uh, under the code name TradeSafe, in which we collaborated with DBS and IDA, the Singapore sovereign. Um, the second use case is on cross-border payments. So uh, we want to make cross-border payments real-time, instantaneous, with full transparency. So these are the two use cases we are working on. Well, if you're trying to innovate, you know, you should do it with a fresh mindset. Business cases are so old. I mean, you know, why would you need a business case to do something which is so exciting, so fantastic? So yes, you need to have a business case, but it should be more in terms of what value propositions are you going to bring to your clients rather than how much money am I going to spend and how much money am I going to make? So we, we went with that mindset. So rather than hard numbers, we focused on our clients, we focused on the value proposition, and guess what? We just did it. Um, the GPSC is a group of six banks. We have all come together um, to, to discuss the rule set, the standards, and the legal framework of Ripple payments. It is, it is definitely a must-have because we are entering into a brave new world, and, and we need some standards against which we all are going to work. So an extremely critical um, committee, an extremely critical group, um, and, and once we set the standards and the legal frameworks, then off we go and implement Ripple throughout our network. There you go. All right, let's see what we have next. This is from Ryan Zagone back in, in January 2018. I'm often asked why we mean by XRP is native to the XRP ledger. It means those texts don't belong to Ripple, the company. They're open source and existed well before the company was founded. We didn't create those texts, but we think they are great and we leverage them. XRP and XRP Ledger are open source and highly efficient, making them great for enterprise use. Anyone can leverage them just as Ripple has done. Great example, trade finance solution built on the XRP Ledger by Standard Chartered, DBS Bank and Development Authority of Singapore in 2015. There you go. All right. Then there was this from Bank XRP. Ripple works with banks focusing on high tech innovation, standard ch chartered. We've renovated. Now, this is a little, a little, um, I guess it's kind of like a little commercial for standard chartered and what they're doing in Hong Kong, I believe. Watch this. Central, the heart of Hong Kong's business and financial center. A strategic location for the world's leading brands and flagship stores. Today, we are excited to enter a new era of branch experience with the official opening of the DeVoe Road Digital Branch. With the trend in digitalization, we have designed the branch around a new customer experience. 
from the iTable that offers a one-stop shop from product presentation to sign-ups, and the iWall that allows customers to instantly download product leaflets to their smartphones to paperless account opening with our e-signature platform. The DeVoe Road branch integrates service excellence with state-of-the-art technology and represents an important milestone towards our aspiration to become customers' digital main bank. Putting customers' interest at the center of everything we do, we created this branch to fast forward what banking in the future would look like and we will continue to challenge ourselves to lead the innovation in customer experience. All right, that's a that's a pretty. You can see digital banks and and apps is where this is all going, folks. So it's, the writing's pretty clearly on the wall. All right, here's another one where um, Danny uh, Aranda. This is a reply to, um, I believe, who was this is XRP Thor, and he uh, Bank XRP had replied with this. This is from Danny Aranda. Was well, a company. Back, I... This is back in um, 2018 right here we've played this before ripple as a company again we're very very well focused on if this. i can just hit the refresh button and get this thing right hold on i'm sorry as a company again we're very very focused on solving one problem uh there are real customers that that problem solves you know a big thing for mm -hmm. uh and they're doing real things with the technology they're actually moving money around the world we have about 100 customers today includes western union mm -hmm. moneygram uh, Bank of America, Standard Chartered, and Santander. Mm -hmm. So really trying to build up a global network where uh, they're able to move money more effectively on behalf of their customers mm -hmm. and really improve the user experience of what it's like to move money globally. Why do you think some of those companies have chosen Ripple? I think part of it is they want to improve their customer experience. They want some kind of strategic weapon to be able to compete with others. Sure. And if you're all relying on the same infrastructure that you have today, which a lot of times in financial services is around you know, 40 or 50 years old, if you can rely on a new kind of infrastructure that enables new applications and new experiences, mm -hmm. that's going to delight customers and you're going to win in the market. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we talked. There you go. That's a good one, too. Okay, and let's see what we have here. Fierce, uh, I, I just wanted to show you this. Um, I looked up who owns Standard Charter. One of the largest owners is, of course, BlackRock. They, they pop up in all of this. But this is the one I was going to focus on. Standard Chartered makes right billion-dollar move. Um, and the first line here is what I wanted to show you. Um, Standard Chartered Chief Executive Officer Bill Winters is going to make a lot, a lot of shareholders, including its largest stockholder, Tamasic Holdings, very happy. I'm not going to get into this article. That's not the point. I just wanted to show you that this Tamasic Holdings is the largest by far shareholder in Standard Chartered. They are, and, and I'm going to play you a video so you can see Standard uh, or Tamasic Holdings is just a large investment firm, but I think it's it it kind of um, shows you the power behind what it, what's going on here, where these guys come from. Let me hit a refresh. This is Tamasic Holdings um, website. You can kind of get a feel for who they are. We had our roots in a young and transforming Singapore. 45 years on, we have grown and branched across the globe. From established businesses to disruptive startups, we see a world of investment opportunities. We spot trends in the unlikeliest of places and reinvent ourselves to stay ahead in a changing and challenging economy. We map our ideas and chart our own paths by fostering a collaborative spirit within and beyond Tomasic. As a generational investor, we do things today with tomorrow in mind. An active economy, a beautiful society, and a clean earth. We aim to do our part for a better world. Seeking to deliver sustainable value in the long term and make a difference in the community. We look forward to the opportunities of tomorrow embracing change and all that it brings as an active investor a forward-looking institution and a trusted steward we invest for generations to come so what i get out of standard charter and their their major shareholder here and and all of this what i really get out of this is that um it looks like singapore and hong kong through these companies are is part of the reason those are major 
areas that Ripple has made a lot of progress. <clears throat> so anyway, I'm going to finish this up by with this right here. And I had never spotted this. I believe this is that, this is from XRP Darren. This is that Bank of America patent that showed Ripple distributed ledger technology in the patent. And I had never noticed it, but standard chartered is listed up here, is, is written on the, the patent, which I thought was interesting. Um, and that came up in my looking around too. I want to finish just by showing you this. I mean, I'm sure you've all seen it by now. Unemployment claims spiked to new record last week with 6.6 .6 million Americans filing for aid. Folks, this is, this is right. This is already getting worse than the Great Depression. Okay. And it, it's, it's just a, a terrible time. And so I hope for everyone's sake that this gets over sooner rather than later. Nobody's having an easy time with it. But um, I do thank you for listening. I am the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and tell your friends and family that this unemployment figure is starting to get pretty scary. Thank you for listening.